We won't, but this is something I just wrote and it's called Missed the Clicks and Scratches. <laughs> knowing you couldn't get me to go downstairs, not knowing that downstairs is where I kept the bodies. You suggested playing music with no iPod docking station, I, I had to trudge upstairs and search the rooms I've avoided to find an old record player with small speakers all covered in dust. So, after a rag for cleaning and finding a handful of records, we eventually sat on the floor with our new phone relics to just listen. The record sounded, well, it's hard to describe. I hear a fullness I haven't heard since before my iPod and earbuds or Walkman headphones. We spend so much time making everything smaller that we forget the details when we shrink everything down so we can cram more into our lives. And simply put, I missed the clicks and scratches. I missed the imperfections. In our modern day lives, we've done everything we could remove nuances, so everything is genetically, generically the same. And now nothing is unique. I've missed the scratches from downstairs. I've mixed the hiccups and skips from a 33, a 45, a 78. It's been a while since I've heard those scratches. It's been a while since I've delved in those imperfections. At least we found this record player so I could remind myself of what I was missing all this time. Now, as we are now forced into this modern world. sermon on how to find the way, he simply raised a solitary sunflower beginning to wilt in noonday heat. Only Cassiapa gave his quiet smile. But why the smile? Did he see what her blossom eye had already seen of the wilting cycle already figured out that the sunflower was a stand-in for the stainless lotus, or that suns and mountains are as temporal as a sepal, or that he understood that he didn't understand, or was it to return her smile, the sunflower? That's one. 
Now this one I found. Thank you. Okay, then. Um, the, uh, this, this one uh, is based on a statue of uh, Millarep I saw in Tibet. Uh, and it explains this uh, famous um, uh, image of Zen. It's a haiku, so pay attention. S suddenly, thunder. Milarepa slaps his face. Sound of one hand clapping. That's copyright, so you have to get some credit. Here. Um, okay. Will right or canapes? Thurston grew, grew thin and brittle, no longer able to hover, to elbow his rivals away from the borders. Instead, he lingered hopefully in an overstuffed chair for daintiness, barely enough to sustain a beetle on a small piece of plate, fetched for him by young lady poets with belt figures and large appetites for encouragement, whose fathers had urged them. Um, did I lose the sound? Yeah, you did. Is it on? Yeah, it's on I mean, do That's I have to be picking the microphone to, to make it work? Yeah, yeah, you're okay now. I'm okay now. Yeah. Okay. Just don't let go of it. Uh, Hold on to it, baby. <laughs> you know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were at the Lady Poets with Belt. <laughs> and, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, here. Try the other mic. Oh, here's another mic. Try the other mic. Okay. Yeah. Try. Try the Democratic. Try, try the other mic. It works. Okay. 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 We called him the cleanup man. He never missed a writer's reception or awards banquet where he deftly reduced the food table to a wasteland, vanished like a giant chipmunk with bulging cheeks and pockets. In his lonely room, propped up by four pillows on his Murphy bed, he worked on five poems side by side, lunch tail crackers with moldy cheese left over from his last triumph, rummage trade invitations to the next small press award a writer's benefit whose notices he pasted on the wall with rancid peanut butter. Ew. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Thurston's work had its interest and its audience well-crafted and predictable points about winning zero to 60 miles per hour motorized wheelchair races down the corridors of the Indy 500 nursing home are fights to the death with tentacled respirators, but nothing of the poetry that bespoke a lightly sauced lobster new bird or a hearty eggs benedict because his stomach would howl. It was like trying to chew recipes. Still, his poems got him into the worst and the best rep receptions in the city. From the upscale congregation of poetry to the Jiffy Peanut Butter Gallo Jug Wine Buffet for donors to the latest desktop collector's edition, Friends of the Poets, Volume 1, the one and only. It was not that he lacked discrimination, it was just that he had to eat. Social Security barely covered his rent and Thurston was serious when he joked that he was the only one of us who actually made a living off his poetry. And so he accepted the final invitation, seated in an overstuffed wing chair with a shriveled grin, teeth clenched on a shrimp scampi, and when the proofreader who moonlighted as a mortician couldn't pry the cheese ball loose from his grip, we gave up and buried Thurston with it. But for a year after, no one had any appetite for canapes, and we had to dump the leftovers into the dumpster for the homeless.
Thank you very much. Yeah, because I don't know which microphone's going to work. I'm going to sneak this one over here so people have a problem. You can say, hey, let me try this one. Or, you know, something just so that we, you know, hopefully don't have a problem in the future. And I will ask, because we have so many of us just sprouting in, that we should probably try to keep it in mind three pieces, five minutes, or something like that, just so that we make sure that we've got enough for everybody here. Because so many people want to see Bob Rash. Oh, yeah, you're awesome. Yeah. Which is what I'm not going to say anything, so please give it up for a really hot lady here. Give it up for Janine Ravislin. Yeah. Both of those seem to be working. Yeah, but sometimes it would go on, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, on a jollier note, uh, we're going to do, um, I think uh, something slides over the water, sustained variation from, which one is this one? This is the... Uh, that actually is the March The March of the yeah. CCNU magazine. Yeah, right. very nice. Anything, anyway, here it is. Something slides over the water. Like the sigh of a depressed man. Don't you wish you had the energy to kill yourself? But this is L.A. Find your sunglasses, turn over, feel the sun on your back, almost hear the smog slowly lifting. Almost hear the smog slowly lifting. Listen, something slides over the water. Turn over, feel the sun on your back, Everything is like the sigh of the depressed man. You are in L.A. Find your sunglasses. You don't have the energy to kill yourself. You don't have the energy to kill yourself. You can almost hear the smog slowly lifting in L.A. Find your sunglasses. Something slides over the water like the sigh of a depressed man. Turn over. Feel the sun on your back. Turn over. Feel the sun on your back. You don't have the energy to kill yourself. A breeze sighs like the depressed man. You can almost hear the smog lifting. Hear something slide over the water. This is L.A. Where are your sunglasses? This is LA, find your sunglasses, man. Turn over, feel the sun on your back, feel something slide over the water. If only you had the energy to kill yourself while the smog is slowly lifting, everything is like the sigh of a depressed man. Everything is like the sigh of the depressed man. This is L.A. You'll need your sunglasses. Can't you almost hear the smog slowly lifting? Turn over. Feel the sun on your back. You don't have the energy to kill yourself as something slides over the water. You wish you could kill yourself, but you can't. Smog is slowly lifting and something is sliding over the water. Turn over, feel the sun on your back, sigh. Get another pair of sunglasses, you'll need them. This is LA, man. Thank you. Um, recently, a wonderful poet on the scene, Matthew Barton died. And uh, there was a memorial for him recently, and uh, this is for Matt and it's titled Goodbye. Goodbye to the shrill sound of train horns, last train platform, the woman that shields her eyes still waits for him. Goodbye, goodbye to Bobby's boarded up gas station on Main Street, house three miles out of town. The one with the screened in porch, broken stairs, Goodbye 
Goodbye, goodbye to all those sulfurous cities burning in a car rear view mirror. Roads that lead to timber lines. He's nowhere now, everywhere. Reading Jack Gilbert's, it seemed natural to be alive back then. The miles crucified at last. Thank you. I've got my planetary jewelry up there, the earth, which makes a noise. And I say this is Uranus because it's the only planet that's tilted on such an angle that its rings are that way and that way. Anyway, <laughs> sorry I'm telling you about plants up. Because I'm actually writing a bunch of poems about the elements and uranium. I just did, although I don't talk about the tilt of the orbit of the planet. But anyway. Um, Please, I recently performed a piece that some of you have heard in so many different ways at uh, Patrick Crowley's open mic, and I'm hoping maybe I'll do that again here when it gets closer to my birthday, but please, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the man, Patrick, get out of there, Patrick Crowley. Woo! makes me feel bad. So I'm going to have to find, you know, because he came and bugged me while I was working <laughs> on the job, I think I'd like to call Mr. Dave Getchick. Put in that for us. Give it up for Dave. Come on. <laughs> See, I didn't believe that Janet actually worked. I actually worked. a job. <laughs> I didn't believe that Janet actually worked. I thought she did stuff like this all day long. I mean, she does like, like publishes like four or five magazines and <laughs> You know, I got up to six right now. She keeps inher inheriting magazines from people. And, um, you know, I thought she didn't have time to do anything except, like, do poetry stuff and write. So I went to work to see her, and I have pictures, if you want to see them, of Janet Kuyper's actually working with her little McDonald's outfit on and her name Oh, tag. no. <laughs> I stand on the third rail, turning my prayer wheel waiting for the answer to the question from above. And I walk, a challenge to the gods, sparks flying from my footsteps. There's only one direction to go, one path to take, as I stand on this third rail, electric knife edge, and I find waiting for the answer to so much life. I can't remember the poem. <laughs> and I find that I can touch no one. For if anyone touches me, if anyone makes a connection, we'll both die, we'll both fry, consumed by powers that we cannot understand and that we can never control. Bob, what do you want to hear? You don't have Omaha with me. How about Remember the Crosses? Are you sure? You've heard it Yay! enough. Yes! yes! Remember the Crosses! This is for Bob, because it's his birthday. Um, in the desert southwest, they use small white crosses at the roadside to mark the spot of a tragic death, a traffic accident, or someone who died of exposure I'm sure driver education teachers scowl and point to the side of the road saying, remember the crosses. Here in the Midwest, we are less sentimental. The holes in our guardrails are repaired nearly overnight. There's an old woman at the cactus bar and grill. She inhales deeply on her schnapps. Her life is lonely 
and sad. She picks up her purse, slinging it over her shoulder like it was a cross of Jesus Christ himself. She walks stiff-legged to the door, and her life is so tragic that little white crosses appear everywhere she goes, following her home and springing up like needles on the floor that she paces at night. Across that sad, dry country, there is so much misery that the very earth of the desert moans, creating a resonance on every roadside, was sent a signal across the rest of the nation, which says, remember the crosses, making crosses appear throughout the land, like mushrooms on your lawn, there one day, there the next. I look, and I find myself surrounded by a sea of many crosses, the names, dates, places, all familiar to me. Echoing in my head, there is one phrase, remember the crosses. Although I close my eyes and ears, I hear, remember the crosses. And before me, a shady and indistinct cross appears with my name, with my date of birth written on it, waiting for me. I want to run away. I want to make the magical vision that allows me to see all the pain and suffering in the world fade away. You see... I've always wanted to make some place. Make some place where people could come and people could hang their crosses at the door. A place where sadness and tragedy cannot penetrate. But this is something that I cannot do. For I was born in the Midwest. And in the Midwest, we are less sentimental. Thanks. beer, so I couldn't really applaud enough for you, even though you're awesome. Um, now, normally I would just say that Patrick should come next, but I can't. I have a rule, and well, every open mic I think has the rule that spot number four always goes to for a new man from Newark, so please, I am doubting my lead if I'm from Derek, but please give it up for Charlie Newman! Number four is important because um, Joe Rorty once said, have you ever noticed that everyone who's number four is an asshole? <laughs> so I've taken number four ever since because I believe in truth and packaging. This was in the uh, Matthew Barton Memorial Book. Maybe the weight you put on yourself wasn't any worse than the weight they put on you. Maybe it was. They didn't care one way or the other, but you, what about you? And what difference does it make anyway, really, when the deed is past tense and there's nothing left but to get over it or not? But that's not really a choice anymore now, or is it? Um, and continuing with the upbeat tone, <laughs> this is the last thing I've written. Unshaven calls scribbled faintly between lines of hollow gods, even as the terminal runs restless. Madhouse soldiers march in transformation and pain. In action mutters my karma to fade. My ecstasy misfires. Dead failure chattering in a drowning pool. I cannot print this verse. Oh, come on, I say to myself. Serve yourself a heaping helping of transcendental chicken to go with all that overdone self-pity. The more I need, the more I sweat Dracula at my worst, listening to the save from some unknown hangman sanity draped across a coffin because God needs to burn the wasted lifetimes of the two off ten scene and just like that, the hero heroic life is forgotten, decoded, relegated to typewriting elongated grave monuments with no sleep. Beware, body, beware. There is only one con without the consolation. Mugshot visions of scientific feeling memories of... It's simple, really. The universe speeds away from the center, and there are not enough hands, and there are not enough fingers to keep it here, no matter how whole, hard you hold on. Thank you. I'm going to do this in stereo. Yeah, first one. I'm sorry. Um, but she can't tweet her what she's doing. Yeah, where exactly is she? Um, because I know that we're going to actually hear music from our pianist Gary for this next one. Oh, I'm please. I'm going to finally call him up. What? I moved the mic away so it won't be so loud. Oh, well, maybe that'll work. Or do we even need that mic? 
Well, anyway, all right. I gave him an intro before. Please, you it up for Mr. Patrick Riley. wanted to uh, continue working. I don't, don't get to work with a pianist that often, so. Uh, I host reading the second and fourth Mondays of every month, although we're skipping this uh, Memorial Day. Uh, so the next is June 11th at Roosters. It's called Ruffle Feathers, and it's at the corner of Diversity and Kenzie. 8 to 10, Roosters is a coffee house with wonderful food, BYOB. Let's see. Um, peace points. <laughs> peace points. These poems I give you, words, expressions, emotions, feelings, they are free and can be dismissed, but they will exist nonetheless. Take them, leave them, they are yours. Movement of life. This life moves in ways we are unable to control, taking us through heaven and hell. You are there on the sofa and I can't touch you. You laugh at a movie, but I see you crying inside. There was love, there was life. We created life, beautiful. We embody love, and now it is spent. Now you struggle just to be my friend. This life, wrapped in past experience, past emotion, takes and takes every breath until the last. We are unable to control the outcome of our desires, of our longing. It is pointless and trivial, yet we breathe. We reach for tomorrow and hope that it will be stronger than today, that it will show us the purpose, meaning, value. And each flight of the sun, flight of the moon, brings us more confirmation of our fragility. were we? What were we then in the spring of our love? Bright flowers, open to the sun's glory, folding our petals tight together in the night's chill, an embrace opening to each morning. Were we but leaves fresh and new growing through our summer? Stretching out our points to grab what life, what life, what energy we could hold in ourselves. Feeding the roots we had set deep within fertile soil, giving rise to seeds that would grow into their own trees, sprout their own leaves. Our fine greenery, our beautiful blooms, set out only to flame and final color that wilt and shrivel torn from our trunk, cast adrift in autumn winds, our dormant winters holding the cold of our past droughts in tight rings, waiting for a spring rain that did not come, our growth stunted by life's misdirection, lumberjack lawyers come now with sharpened axes, ready to hack what remains, we fall to the sun middle to the plank, set in the kiln, our moisture removed, we are hardened, ready to be something new.
because I happen to have this right here and I need something with music, I figured I would have to come up with something light. This poem is about hanging out at a bar alone, drinking. This poem is called Cocoon I've Created. It depresses me to the point of convalescence, feeling alone, even in a crowded room full of people. Whenever I'm out like this, I enjoy being in a bar by myself when I've got no one else so I can stay in my world and drink. When I'm in a crowded room of strangers, I avoid them, drinking my beer and staying in this cocoon I've created. Because even though it costs more, it's better out here like this. Really. What do I need company for anyway? I've even got a business card that I got from a museum of contemporary art that says, Dear friend, I am not here to pick anyone up or to be picked up. I am alone because I want to be here alone. <laughs> and this card is meant to be given to people who want to pick you up at a bar saying, really, no offense, but just let me be. And you can give them this card as a nice, albeit weird, gesture to be left alone. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm saying that I want to be alone because I am. And I hate having to search people out. And the thing is, I hate it that all of these good-looking suitors aren't rushing up to me, aren't knocking on my hypothetical door just to be able to talk to me. I don't know. Maybe it is just me. Maybe I don't need those business cards to tell people they'll leave me alone. I'll just sit here and let the world go by. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, I just went, I'm like, I have this card in my pocket. I'm serious. It's seriously, I got this. Dear friend. I'm like, I have to. Um, I believe, because I don't have my list, that there was a name on there named Virginia. And I'm like, is this a newbie? Yeah. Yay! Yeah. I love newbies because we give you extra ultra lovings because that means you're double plus awesome. So please, ladies and gentlemen, give you the screaming idiot applause for Virginia. Come on up here. We should really keep to the five minute rule because people are like, well, I've got three, but it's still going over. So we should watch it so everybody can get in before Exactly. Now. Thank you, thank you. Sorry. So I'm just going to get into it. For those who are convinced to this day that I'm nothing but a recovering addict, please do me a favor and fuck off. <laughs> I wasn't born to be the dark seed in anyone's life, let alone my own life. So all I want is to be respected as an actual human, an actual person, despite all of the fucked up bullshit that I ever had went through. So don't try to pull the same type of bullshit I've been dealt with for so long. Because I've seen every single 
pattern from every single thorn, from every single stem of every single flower I've been given by anyone at any point. Call me out on my so-called trust issues, but one, you clearly don't know who I really am as a person, and two, you're the one who lacks any kind of proper judgment to call me out if your sorry ass life depended on it at all. Maybe I should be laughing my ass off at you, but that won't do me any form of good if I did. Because I would be just as bad as you already are with me. Therefore, I won't go down to that very level simply because I am not you. Point blank. So I might sound like an ass to you, but I don't bullshit Pete anyone. I'm too real for you to try to handle. Also known as the I don't give a fuck syndrome. Because I'm far more concerned with my own brand of happiness than you. I'm a grown woman at 29. What else do you expect now? Or maybe I should rephrase that bit. Because to you, I'm only a seed that's darker than hell itself. Yet, I really don't care. I never did. What else is new to anyone or even to me? As a matter of fact, I have to just really laugh at you. Your bullshit manners leave me in stitches of laughter because in the eyes of everyone, you're the truest stark seed inside the present day of this life. So in reality, it's a matter of time before your bullshit and nonsense is finally exposed to the real world as we all know it, and you'll pay dearly. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, this one's called the Re Re Revenge Sweetest Honey. It's based on a song, so you might want to ask me a little a bit more of the details on this one. Never a saint, and you're a sinner who fucked up ever so royally, especially every time you found new ways to only hurt me from the inside out. Yet, you give me so many things and ideas to use as my act of revenge against you. And when I'm all done killing you, my own revenge will smell and taste as sweet as the honey inside my cup of tea that's in my two hands right now. While I am in the midst of writing this letter of my revenge to be left in my will, to be read only by my kin upon the very moment of my death, whenever that will really be. So, as I am making up my list of just how I will kill you, how I will kill your sorry and pathetic ass, and that's said nicely about you for all of your bullshit antics, that sounds a lot like a Casanova Mariner that poisoned every innocent female to a type of death where every single one of those females are no longer the women those around them can recognize them at all or make out anything they say. So the remote idea of your death by a firing squad a la any recent one from my memory or something like Jack the Ripper but that sounds too gruesome and much too noticeable. So I won't go there. <clears throat> hmm. There's got to be a method I can use that I actually enjoy. Oh, wait. Who 
poison. The very method you used for so long, and now that I think about it, this should actually this actually should do the damn trick to kill your fucked up ass in 30 seconds or less. A thought of such sounds so sweet. Just like the honey inside the cup of tea that is in my two hands in front of me. So now, I'm putting in the stuff for a poison. Deadlier than your bullshit version of cyanide. Since I've fully recovered from all of your, your fucked up tri trickery, and now I can't wait to see your face when you're dead. That's that, thanks. I know she's in her three, but it was well over five already, so I've got to give it up for somebody who can bring music, and it's probably not somebody that plays the piano. Please give it up for Mr. Dan Cleary. Dan, come out right here. We've got a lot of people, so we're going to try to keep these short. Dan, thank you. I should also say to people, because I've been doing this, I am recording open mics. If somebody has an issue with being recorded for the open mic, let me know, and I'll get rid of you on the video for a release. Uh, I got two mics. I feel like I'm at an orgy. <laughs> 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 uh, last week was uh, they celebrated the uh, uh, centenary of the great uh, Scott Turpin, uh, written in a poem. <coughs> it's called In Memory of Scott Turpin. Curiosity did not kill this cat. It animated him. It set him free, free to ask questions, find out what was what from a whole spectrum of humanity. For him, both high and low were all the same. He, he touched the core of everybody's heart, foraging forward Without praise or blame, he turned the interview into an act. His work is beyond as, as, assessment. It's too, too vast. And yet a common thread runs through it all. His jovial spirit, when he probed and, and pressed and had his subject up against the wall, truths were revealed, often surprising both. He was a great egalitarian poet. Our chronicler is gone, the mighty st studs. When shall we come upon his life again? We knew him by his crumpled hat and duds in need of pressing, by his Sideways, sideways grin. We knew him by his plethora of words that bristled from his face and nose and ears. On every subject that the world affords a curious mind, he outclassed his peers. Who can forget his wit, his warmth of heart, which permeated all he set about with avid Gusto. Who can forget his part in putting racial prejudice to rout? Who can forget his, his books, his interviews, his calling of the news that's always news? And uh, I've been getting myself into a lot of, a lot of trouble in, on Facebook <laughs> by uh, writing, writing poems like this. Uh -oh. To a Facebook friend. You are the music deep within my heart. The song I hum now almost every day. No matter where I am, at work or play, I feel your presence thrilling me in part, your latest judgment on my eager act. Though I am here and you are far away, I hearken 
to, to the many things you say. No longer all at sea without a chart. Ah, my dear love, I long to press you close, but that will have to wait, at least for now, until some brighter, more propitious year. When I can part your petals like a rose, <laughs> bestow a lasting kiss upon your brow, and sniff that sacred spot behind your ear. So incredibly awesome. Thank you very much. I like the screams and cat calls from the women. That was the buzz. Um, because before I call up my next open micer, who will hopefully have piano, I've got this bag that gives any and all money, give your life savings, give early and often, give everything you can to our phenomenal feature this evening. I am going to start passing this around after our next open mic gets on up here, but he's actually working with Gary right now to figure out what kind of music to play. So, ladies, and I will bug him for money afterward. I'm like the little hound for that. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give it up for Mr. Bob Lawrence. Bob, get it up here. I don't have any, like, how do you that I could read while I sell it? Are you ready? Oh, he's got, his, he's got the music, so let me do it better now. Give it up for Bob. <laughs> I'd like to be under the sea to watch the fish go swim. I'd like to squish a jellyfish and then let go of him. I'd like to grab a soft-shelled crab and take him for a walk. I'd like to hurdle over a turtle and teach dolphins to tug. I'd like to see a manatee and then go play by him. I'd like to do all of these things. If only I could swim. Oh, stereo phone. Huh? Yeah, last time I was here at the uh, Mile Party uh, platform on drums, and tonight it's the Mile Party platform on the little guy. Yeah! All right. The other candidates say we want to help the poor, the homely, the lonely, the unemployed, the underemployed, the common man, the ordinary woman. Don't believe them for one nanosecond. I drove here tonight in my modest compact sedan with crank windows. The other candidates are chauffeured to debates in shiny limousines and gas, followed by gas-guzzling motorcades. I offer you bare knuckle truth, softened with the glove of humor. They weave facts, half truths, and outright lies into a blanket to cover your eyes. Let me manifest the Maya High Party's commitment to the common good, our empathy for the destiny of the little people, with a pean of praise for the lowliest of the lowly. Dust! Yes, dust! Ubiquitous, prodigious dust! Over a half million particles, visible and invisible, in each cubic foot of indoor air. 6,000 dust particles per hour, settling on each square inch. Two pounds per week in the average house. And falling in the oceans, each year one billion tons. Dust brings diversity in its trillions of atoms per speck. Clothes, fabrics, hay for fibers, but food, wood, and soil particles, mold, smoke, soot, pollen, dust mites, and dust mite feces, bacteria, insect parts, insecticides, cement, drywall, mineral salts, cat, dog, and mountain lion, dander, volcanic ash, and extraterrestrial debris, and more, in combinations too numerous to score. People are not mere dust catchers. No, fellow citizens, we are dust factories, like snakes gone wild. We shed our outer layer of skin every day or two. Up to 10 million skin flakes per minute, providing delectable meals for dust mites. Millions might romp in your mattress tonight. Dust can kill. Dust from a coal mine choking 
dust from a sugar plant exploding, dust from Chernobyl radiating, dust from the Sahara smothering coral in the Caribbean Sea. The power of dust reaches beyond the fearsome. Dust bestows the backbone of the clouds in the sky. Without space dust, a star cannot form, ignite and warm. Without planetary dust, planets will never swarm. And we would be here. The purpose of art, said Picasso, is washing the dust of daily life off our souls. The Mile High Party says the soul may not exist, but dust is real. Enter a darkened room with sunlight streaming through one obstructed window. Turn on meditative music. Sit at a right angle to the flow of light. Gaze at multitudinous dust motes, each dancing in its own inviolate space, yet all connected in harmonious ballet. Then imagine the little people, the life-giving dust of democracy, coming together, speaking with one voice, to condemn the corporate pirates and demand true freedom and true justice for all, and then vote mile high, the party of the little guy. Right. And then more people can show up. See, I have to be in stereo, so I have to That's be in um, Ladies and gentlemen, I'm always going to love this one just because she brought me mint chocolate, dark chocolate up and up. But um, you really find some of her stuff politically very, very interesting, so please give it up for Annabelle Echo. Annabelle, come on! have a short statement tonight dedicated to my future husband Berman Supreme and I hope you guys saw him in the, at the protest he was you know he was great. okay I want a pony <laughs> I've been getting a lot of tweets and other types of rude text inquiries concerning one of my many ex-husbands, Mr. Mothballs. Instead of trying to answer each and every one of my fans individually, I'm posting this visual and textural portrait illustrating him and describing our relationship to Mr. Mothballs regarding my tears. My tears whirl around your revolving door, making circles on the floor. And here's a picture. He kind of looks like a fat cat. That's how I drew him. Okay, thanks. It would be better if I just hover behind everyone on the stage so we don't take their place when they're walking away. Um, I feel bad because I don't get to have the pianist playing music unless my blues musician uh, that's coming up next is actually going to want that as well. I don't know. So ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Cousin Bones. Wes, come on up here. stations as it doubles past my ear 
it lands a black dot on a white plane how maddening it must be to be once a larva and make the leap to become a fly to have wings and a thousand eyes but nowhere to soar off to he's always at the window wanting out without knowing what out is he throws himself against the glass he beats his head against the glycerine kaleidoscope eyes press against an invisible wall the hard air the see-through substance won't let him fly it's bigger than the world he can see i wonder if i should set him free <laughs> Should I open the cold glass and pop out the screen? Should I stroll over and smash him out of his misery? Should I play God and hope my friend comes back with thumbs rather than worthless wings? But it's not that simple. God, man, or fly, he's determined to get through. My friend throws himself against the glass again and again until he beats out his brains or exhaustion or starvation he falls on his back like dried paper falls there on the sill with dozens of others it's called the fly When all the graves sprout seeds and there's knotted eyes in the trees and all the stars are washed away by the cities and the sun blinks and the skulls hatch and the arctic tide comes in all that you've loved and forgotten will come back to claim us. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, my name is Wes. I got a blues band called Cousin Bones. And um, if you're not here on Friday, we're playing Grand Bar down at uh, Grand and Ashland. And uh, I got some flyers and uh, some CDs if you're cool. Uh, just stop by and uh, talk to me. I got merchandise. So I'll buy in. Yes. <laughs> Like cool enough, I don't want a CD. That was awesome. So, ladies and gentlemen, because I've got to keep going at this, give it up for Daniel. Come on up here, Daniel. How awesome. And it's somebody who's tall. I've been shrinking the mic. Thank you very much. Sunless days, wind blows the clouds. Fresh and crisp, anxiety abates. Like last night's lightning, experience awakens you, commanding attention. Willow shakes leisurely, its strength denying tension. Indistinguishable from brothers a minute ago, new clouds are overhead changing and unchanging. Thanks. Um, I don't know if anybody else has gone to Home Depot only one time for a home improvement project, <laughs> but it's a very special occasion, which led me to write this. The broken, the broken garage door blues. Hit the button but the door just stops. Crash bang, diagonal slant. Gotta combo lock the back, the back gate and go inside to see the guts all break. After pushing and pulling and cutting my thumb, finally found the problem and got it all plumb. 
The clamp's too small, you need a lug screw. Just one trip to the depot, but soon we were through. Don went up fine, not down, but why? Of course, it's cut cables on the electrical eye. Unscrewed, wire stripped, then put back in place. Glad I got my secured garage space. <laughs> this, one, uh, um, this one's, I've lost too many friends. So, uh, for Memorial Day coming up. All the ones that passed before come off into my mind. The memories fade, but something more in soul is intertwined. If we could speak to them, I'd thank them kindly. Our lives had been arranged so intertwinedly. We call them up when we are together, ways our lives changed, fondly remembered. Drawn strength like a rope, fabric woven in place. Friendship lives in a space beyond being. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow, I have to turn down the microphone. Awesome. Sorry. <laughs> it's so crazy tall. I've got three people left on the list. I want to make sure I know that Jerry here has got only one minute. And I hope that KC can be short as well because I want to have a little bit of break time before we have our phenomenal feature for Bob Rash. Oh, yeah. And I'm taking up space for the You know. But I've got, a, is this a newbie? I've got a Hollis on my list. Is there a Hollis in the house? Yes, there is. Please give it up for us. Give him a scream. Oh, yeah. 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 Gunpowder, Joppa Town, Magnolia, Aberdeen Proving Ground, Trenton makes, the world takes. This coast strange to you, Ebony Hammer, as it was to Pilgrim's Divine Crown. And you, San Diego sous chef, raise your fist in protest at the commander's doorstep. And you, the boy with hazel skin, let the queens be a Benedictine for Baltimore quelling hate. And you, the wrinkled Utah widow, burn antebellum relics, harvesting life on some gilded trellis. And you, the girl who fled Chinook, wake apathetic friends, telling them, get to Denver, bring a tent. And you, the smoker stranded in Helper, rescued by Chipeta in a pickup heap. She carries you to Salt Lake. And you, trampled by frightened elk on a rundown glacier ranch, you survived to wine Winnemucca. Thorny tree, you carry me on an endless westbound odyssey. Your every prick upon my skin wakes me to my home again. Youthful woman on the train car, screaming, <clears throat> screaming round the low star. With tangled locks of silver hair, you stare into my dream. How do you know so much about me? You misty-eyed genius. I want to see what makes us twisted. See the flames splashing between us. Above ground, above the train, an aging woman plays a song under the weeping tree, her arthritic fingers surging against stiffness, inspiring the commuters, quietly quelling fears of a destination unfathomed, the transfer through the tunnel, the connection to some other place. You've been swinging around the low star, wondering just how far you might fall. When your journey is a circle, chances are you'll end up mad as a dog. If you see black mystic moon, crescent, quarter, gibbous, or bloom, ponder her and she will ponder you. If the mist late thick, some wolves won't cry, for sleep's a natural alibi. But I'll howl for you till the night my fire dies. 
The woman disappears into the willows, leaving behind her ukulele. You pick it up and board the train. White woman you knew has come and gone. The blue girl's born to sing black songs. You the moot poet, you city hammer, clamor all night making art for the canter. You toppy haired genius, growing ten story hemp trees, and the town rebuilt for thought to stand sentry. Sullen young Eartha, whose life had meandered, yielded lush life with blink empty handers. And Stella the Great sips cool diamond whiskey. On mountaintop fate, her eyes glisten misty. You carry few arms. Your peace is no mystery. Thinkers made heroes in deserts of history. White band of wonder, black mystic chanter. Are we not all poets climbing for answers? In scuff strap boots in the third train car, you transfer to some other train and ride the winding rails to some other place. Where abandoned automobile parking lots smother the dirt and life below, up will rise young plants finding within themselves hereditary code, hieroglyphic zeros and ones, instructing them to seize the asphalt tyranny. Their vines grip the pavement, pulling the future and pushing the past. In the cold months, aquaponic wonders will be fed by fishy water and starlight stored in silicone panels. These many species of life will be grown and shared amongst the biggest and smallest, from the near coast to the far coast. Where lethal drugs and pointless gunfire are traded, there will be greens, berries, and grains. The violent half-dead brick island towers imprisoned thousands of impoverished and disheveled, black, angry, and afraid. Up shall rise young poets, prophets, farmers, and builders to heal the lonely, crowded, anarchic spaces. You speak to your black, leather-bound moleskin before you exit the train. She gives no reply, but listens like a blind, mute sage, with an appetite for raw, true thoughts, transmuting feelings into words, willing you to take your quiet voice and make it louder and explode your perspective so the north arrow eats itself and nothing is left but the deep west beyond for what is west but a word thank you remember your precious like, remember your precious whatever you do i am holding this i'm going to be cheesy just because i can i hope she is my sunshine band please Give it up for KC. Come on up here, my lady. Come on, lady. Everybody know that the open mic is not unaware. We do record a video uh, podcast for features, and so we do it every other week. The open mic often becomes the other half. If you have an issue with it, you let me know, and I'll kill you for it. Oh, well then, just yell a little loud, also. It freaks me out because uh, I can't hear myself so loud like that. So what? <laughs> <laughs> I am the elusive, the unreal, sketchy, shadowy, and grave. Take a picture. You won't find me, for I'll be below the surface. I'll be the weeds in your garden. Wake up, hear me, for I am the hidden harmony. I'm not here to comfort you nor to soothe your fears. I'll not dry your tears. Instead, I'll increase them, for I am made of the salt, of the foam, of the tide, of the waves. I am of the sea, pouring salt into the wound hurts, yet speeds recovery. I'll not mask my smell, nor manicure myself. I'll be sticky, oily, dank, musky, funky, beyond ripe, Rotten, the retreat to your advance, the arrow pointing down. I'll be the slap of silence in your face. You'll claw your eyes till you bleed. You'll claw your scab till you see. Don't come to me for sympathy, for my medicine is not sweet. And you, who seek to plunder my hidden treasures, I will destroy you, petrify you, 
Why she trapped and frozen in misery, and I will do a jig as you succumb to me, for I am as old as old as can be, constant, persevering, and necessary. I am the original nasty, the mother you cannot come to, the spirit's clay. Rust on the cow's teeth. Cloud obscure the sun. I am the meat with heat. The muck down below. The severe scapegoat. The one you pretend not to know. And that is called Look Deep Within. <laughs> I'm like sitting down with the camera, oh, oh, oh where's she going? <laughs> but that was just incredibly awesome, and I really hope you come back, and I'm going to have to stop talking. So, leave that up for my final album. My Grace, like, it's only a minute. It's only a minute. Please give it up for Gary. Get on up here, man. It was Jerry. I said Gary. I said it was because Gary was playing the piano, and so was the next. All right, now I have to say it properly. Give it up for Jerry. So beautiful she was. Don't you think? Yeah. Or don't you? I just went to deliver a poem in one minute or less. Count me down. I met my person in the mirror. In this bar tonight. She used to sit across from me, but now it's on my right. She spoke, but over my voice, I just couldn't catch her name. She mimicked all my questions. And of course, I did the same. <laughs> I bought a drink for each of us, and the barmaid spots the change. When I tried to pay one what I owe, they told me I was strange. <laughs> my person in the mirror just laughed, reflecting mirthfulness. We bickered and we shouted some, and then we raised our fists. Twin bouncers crept behind us and gave us each a smack. One tossed me out the front door. Thank you. I love the people who actually know what they're actually reading without having to look at paper for it. I've got a thing that says Jeff Helgeson and a Buddha uh, Puddinghead Press uh, present Bloomsday on June 16th. And they're like, please give it up for it. Dave, got your word to go. Okay, okay. I on, on June 16th, Jeff and I are, gonna, are doing this thing we've done for how many years? Like eight years? Ten eight years? years? Uh, it's called Bloomsday. It's the day that the James Joyce book Ulysses took place at, we do this whole thing in the space of about two and a half hours, and you're all invited. It's 2442 North Clark Street at the Galway Arms. It's going to be on June 16th. It's a Saturday. Come on out. Yeah. Dan Cleary's going to be in it. Drew Schwartzberg's going to be in it. A lot of local poets are going to be in it. Thanks. And now for everybody, you have, I swear, two minutes, and then we're going to have a phenomenal feature coming up with just a few for Bob Rashko. Thank you, thank you. Refill your drinks. I'll see you in a two.